You're listening to Somewhat Frank with me, Frank Gruber. After working in the corporate world for a decade, I decided to blaze my own path by co-founding Tech Cocktail, which helped catalyze local startup communities and eventually turned into Techco Media, a site which grew to millions of readers and was eventually acquired. Over the past decade, I've interviewed hundreds of entrepreneurs and thought leaders from some of the fastest growing and most successful companies in history. And along the way, I've learned amazing lessons from my experiences. So we're going to talk about startups, tech, innovation, and their intersection with personal life, and anything else on Frank Gruber's mind. So let's get started being somewhat frank. Somewhat Frank is produced with the help of Established, my new company. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this Somewhat Frank podcast. This special Friday the 13th episode is, uh, it's not brought to you by anybody. It's, it's powered by Established, but uh, I'm here with Johnny Goodtimes. Johnny, how are you? I'm great, Frank. I'm brought to you here by Startup of the Year Summit, which is coming up next week. So I'm actually spon- Thank you. Thanks for sponsoring today. Uh, it is Friday the 13th, and did you know that there are two in 2020? Of course there are, because it's 2020. What would you expect? <laughs> you know? I didn't know that, but it makes sense. Of all years, uh, two dates that are known for bad luck. So it makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, we'll get them out of the way. That, that's, what, that's what I think anyway. In November, I mean, we're, we're already, you know, almost halfway through November. So crazy wow. how fast, fast this month's been going in such a long year. <laughs> yeah, with that being said, what, so do you have any upcoming Thanksgiving plans or are you just going to be working straight through the holidays? <laughs> I'm going to be pounding on my computer all. No, it's um, it's a weird year, right? Like, so it, it, may, it makes me kind of wonder what to do. It's not going to be the normal year where I get together with my family from all over the country and uh, get together. I think, you know, we're going to hunk, be hunkering down. We've got still got a global pandemic that are, you know, basically every year or every day, it just continues to like one up itself and, and do, do more, uh, I guess you could say, and the numbers are out of control. So I think we're going to just hunker down here and, uh, you know, it's going to be weird. I mean, it's not, I'm not going to see my family. I think I'm curious what people are doing, um, you know, with families from afar. I'm, I feel like we've been doing the Zoom calls and the FaceTimes and whatever. Um, is there anything else we can do like to, to, to kind of make it feel a little bit, just a little bit more normal with this, uh, you know, special kind of dis- distanced uh, uh, holiday? Yeah, it's, I saw a funny meme the other day and it was the cops were staking out the turkey bin at the grocery store. Like I see, I thought you bought a turkey for 10 to 12 people, you know, because <laughs> you're not supposed to be having family gatherings. So oh, right, right, right. So they're, they're waiting for people to, to, to make the purchase and then pounce. Right. Um, I that's pretty funny. Yeah. I thought yeah, I liked so, that. Yeah. So we'll, we'll be doing it here locally. And, uh, you know, obviously I'll have a few um, close friend family members that we've already been in kind of a bubble with this entire time uh, participate. But um, other than that, that's, that's it. And it's going to be weird. I'm going to be sad, I think. And, and bummed. And I'm sure I'm not the only one out there in the country doing that. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy. I used to see my family all the time and I have not, by the time this kind of whole things, I mean, plays out, it may not be a year. It might be a, a year since I see them in, in person, which is kind of nuts if you think about it. Right. No, everybody's in the same boat, unfortunately, but we'll make the yeah. best of it. Yeah, as definitely. Always. Definitely. So anybody out there that's listening, I'd love to hear your special, like, you know, social distanced uh, activities that you're doing with your family from afar. I, I'm looking for ideas. Um, crowdsourcing this out there, putting it out of the universe. What are you doing aside from the regular FaceTimes and you know Zooms? Is there anything else that you can do to kind of make it more interesting and and not feel like fatigue? Because we're already on the screens all the time with everything we do. So I'm curious, is what are you guys doing? Let me know. We'd love to hear it. Drop it in in our comments or share it with us via Twitter. Um, I'm at Frank Gruber at Somewhat Frank, as well as at John Guidos. That's G U I D O S. John, traditional spelling, and F-R-A-N-K-G-R-U-B-E-R. So let us know on Twitter. We'd love to hear what you're up to and uh, what you're thinking about for this kind of weird, weird, thankful, gratitude-focused holiday. But it does mean we should all just be great, grateful we're here. I think that's the main thing is like, while we're having this weird experience, just enjoy the fact that you're here and think about the fact that there's a lot of folks that have been uh, lost this year due to the pandemic. You're absolutely right, Frank. And you know what? That's kind of a nice segue because I wanted to throw a surprise new segment your way. Okay. Oh, I, I love know surprises. You know me. <laughs> yeah, you, you haven't heard about this yet. But so one of the things I want to do on these podcasts, because we're going to try to get them out more regularly and, and rather quickly after recording them, is I want to talk about what's trending. Mm-hmm. Right. So one of the things that's trending today is it's World Kindness Day. Oh. So I don't know if you're yeah. aware of that, but I know that you 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 know you're a big 
proponent of being thankful for things. And so I also th thought this might be a nice opportunity. I guess every, I didn't know this, but every November 13th is World Kindness Day. Wow. So what do you think about that? And what are you going to do today to be kind to people? I want to know. Ooh, good question. I did not know it was a World Kindness Day. Um, and that is good to know. I think I'll probably do something nice for my wife and for my little one, because they're the closest to me right now. And maybe Maybe for some of our team as well. We'll see. We'll see. I got to think about it now. This is kind of putting me on the spot, but I do love little celebrations that motivate. So maybe there's something we can do to kind of spread the love. Um, maybe I'll put something out, out on Twitter too. I don't know. Got to think about it. What I could do to kind of make an impact in uh, today. Yeah. And so just all of our listeners know this is off the cuff, right? Frank doesn't know about these things. So I, I'm putting him in a weird spot, but um, <laughs> it's fun. But anyway, I like you're, you're, all, you're always, you're generally, uh, genuinely kind guy. So uh, I'm sure we'll think of something later today. All right. Also Friday motivation day or Friday motivation is trending. So um, I know I sent around a little video earlier today to try to get everybody motivated. So what do you do to keep yourself motivated? Specifically um, when times are stressful and tough. Yeah, I always turn to a couple of things. So um, and one of the things actually is, is, is what we're going to talk about later. We can talk about it now, but is, so first, first off, exercise is a big thing, right? Like you got to get out there and burn some of this extra anxiety and stress off. So like I did a nice brisk walk this morning. It's a little cold this morning. It's not in the, in the 60s and 70s anymore here like it was last week. And so got that energy out, walked our little, I got two little doggies that need to get, get out as well and saw some wild turkeys on the way, which is kind of crazy. They were running across the street um, in front of us. So uh, got out there, got, got some, got, saw some things, kind of, kind of refreshed a little bit. Listened to kind of my daily routine of, of, of favorite uh, podcasts and other things that, like books and things on uh, Audible that I listen to as I walk, and uh, got that going. So I kind of got the, got the blood flowing, got the energy out, and then um, that kind of helps me kind of recenter. Uh, another thing that you can do if you're a little bit, in, you know, stressed, there's a, a new tool. Um, it's actually I dropped it into uh, the sum into my my newsletter. If you're not a subscriber, you can go to uh, frankgruber.me forward slash newsletter. And, uh, and add yourself to the list. But uh, there's a, a startup out of Tampa, and it's called um, uh, Solo, Solu. It's a Solu uh, Tone Therapy. So S-O-L-U, Tone Therapy. And basically, these are stress, uh, these are like, there's these little, two little um, items that you basically put by each other, turn them on, and they make these sounds. And um, I have them in the other room. I should have grabbed them before this. I, horrible, horrible setup for me, huh? And uh, long story short, it, it allows you to like relieve anxiety and stress in three minutes. So it's just these tones, you just listen and you, it's almost like a mini meditation. And, um, and it's really interesting uh, what it how it makes you feel. So it's hard to explain them, hard to even put words around because you just, you get down and you're like, mm, that felt good. And then you just, you kind of do it again. But they're, they recommend doing it twice a day. Um, I've done it a couple of times here and there and I already felt like it, it helped. But um, you know, that's kind of what I do to, to motivate and kind of get rid of some of that stress. And then obviously, um, you know, obviously try to keep a positive attitude in general. Sure, sure. So I have two more quick little uh, trending items I wanted to talk real quick. But I, did you see that Elon Musk tweeted that he tested positive for COVID-19? What? No, I did not. Yeah, this is literally, I, I just pulled this stuff right before this uh, wow. session. So yeah, I did not know that. Uh, wow, that's crazy. It's, I mean, it's, I mean, it's spreading. Like the positivity rates are really, really high. Um that's, I mean, it's bound to happen, right? I guess you're not taking precautions or maybe if, even if you are, because the crazy part is that even if you're wearing the mask and you're, you're trying to limit yourself, you end up going to the grocery store. There is still a slight possibility that you could, you know, contract it somehow. It's a way lower probability because you're wearing a mask and hopefully everyone else in the area is, but um, you know, it, it's possible. So I think, you know, still it's not the, uh, you know, silver bullet to wear the mask, but there was some, some news this week about, potential, you know, vaccines and things that'll be coming out within the next five to six months, hopefully, that'll help, um, that are, are making strides. And I think they have said, you know, are working potentially in some of the smaller case studies that they've done so far um, with that. So, it, it, you know, hope is around the corner, I think, I feel like um, we're not there yet. Um, I'm f feeling like there might be some national mandates again, which are not now national mandates. Uh, they've never done a national mandate. I think that's what's needed um, to kind of, to kind of, um, knock this out. Um, if you're familiar with Nate Silver, he's a big, um, you know, Nate Silver, he's a big, uh, like statistician that kind of predicts things. Sure. Yeah. So he's out there on his website. Um, he shared some news or some thoughts around what needs to be done. And I think one of the things he recently said was like, we need to do like these three week on like national kind of mandated lockdowns 
and then a week off and then three weeks off. And if you think about it, we did it now and we kind of presented that right now around right before the holidays. And you because t- most of the time for us anyway, you know, next week is, is crazy. And then the week after those next two weeks, uh, the final couple of weeks of Thanksgiving kind of time frame are pretty slow. And then there's two more weeks of December. And then there's two weeks of, of kind of cr- actually almost three weeks of slow again around the, the holidays and Hanukkah, New Year. And, um, and so if we did that, we took those times and we just said, lock it down. You know, now granted, it won't be as fun and you'll probably be all with your close and immediate family. And maybe that'll be good. Maybe that won't. I don't know. It depends uh, on how that, that interaction goes. But either way, um, that could potentially help squash this thing. Sure. Yeah, I agree. Would you, do, uh, last thing, would you take that? Would you take those mandates and be like national mandate? Boom, lock it down. Take a break, a couple of weeks, and not lock it down again. Yeah, I would love to. I mean, it's like pulling off a band aid, right? Just get it over with real quick. But we tried to do that back in March, and yeah. fortunately, we oh, saw that work. We did, but it was never national. I think that's the difference. It was all localized, and everyone had their own opinion about what was safe and what wasn't. And um, you got to realize we're all connected. People are flying again like crazy, and. I heard a report that um, from American Airlines and um, some others that they're like, you know, people are booking for Thanksgiving and, and Dece- you know, in Christmas time and, and, the, and New Year's and all that already. And they're they're not like they were a year ago, but they are getting seeing that increase, which is good for the industry. But, you know, that does mean that there's potential for things to spread more quickly. Right. Right. Well, people are going to have opinions on either side of it forever. Uh, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> if I do it, I have been doing it. Right, <laughs> right, right. right, right. So mm-hmm. I have, been. I haven't traveled, uh, flown, or anything like that. But anyways, okay. So keep moving. Um, did you see PlayStation Five was uh, shipped yesterday and launched? Um, and I know that it crashed. Like I tried to get one, I was unsuccessful. But I tried mm-hmm. to get one on a number of different places, whether it be Best Buy or Amazon, and. Um, I, I don't know if you, I don't think you're a big gamer, Frank, but I, I used that, to be back in the day. Tell me why this is better than every other gaming platform or why do people want this so much? Cause I'm curious. Well, you know, they come out with a new one every couple of years, right. And they just, they're just quicker, faster processors. I mean, literally the graphics are better than this real life call we're having right now. I mean, really? cause we're using, Zoom remote. yeah, I mean, you, you could, if you are into first person shooter games, I mean, it looks like you're in a real battlefield. It's crazy. It's like it's like watching a movie, but you can move people around and do what you like. So it's pretty wild. So basically, you know, it's the it's the graphics cards and and just the overall experience is like life like. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, the players on Madden look like we do right now, but you mm-hmm. can play. You, know, you can play and probably better than we do, quite frankly. So, well, anyways, so yeah, that, yes, that jury's still out. We don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But that that shipped yesterday, and I know that uh, people were frantic trying to find it. But cool. uh, I want to keep moving on. Another segment that we've always done, and I know you're is very near and dear to your heart, is celebrating people in your network. So I'm going to let you take it away. What do you got? What? Uh, what oh yeah, there's been a lot the last. I mean, last time we did this was about a month ago, and we like you said, we're going to pick it up and try to do more so that there's not as many in the in the hopper here. But I'll quickly rattle things off. Ari Newman out in Colorado, he's got a new seed fund called the Fund Rockies, which is early stage uh, seed fund for startups focus on that region, uh, Colorado area. Uh, Josh Williams, he just relaunched the geolocation app, GoWalla. So back in the day, there was GoWalla, there was a big feud, not a feud, but just kind of like a head-to-head matchup of GoWalla versus Foursquare. And they were dueling it out and GoWalla got acquired by Facebook and kind of went away. And now he's he's kind of brought it back and uh, it'll be launching it more readily, readily in a bunch of cities around the country. It's a lot of fun. It was kind of a fun version of geolocation, kind of checking in and all that. So that's kind of cool. Um, Do you ever do any of that? Did you ever play GoWalla? I did not know. Okay, well, it's kind of like a game. Yeah, you collected like badges, and it was kind of like you're on a on a uh, scavenger hunt, if you will, with an app, which is kind of fun. And uh, so he's bringing that back, so that's kind of cool. So he, I'd love to hear the backstory of how that all occurred because he did get acquired by Facebook, and then now he must have required he acquired it back, and and he's launching it again. So that's kind of interesting. Um, sure. Okay, so Matt Van Horn, who used to uh, work at Dig a long time ago and you know, Galaxy Far, Far Away, has left a, long, a while back and started his own company, um, created a, a June, the June Oven, uh, which is getting in, he's got a third generation June Oven, which is going to be ready for the holidays. So it's a really interesting device. It uses sensors to basically cook everything in these like little, uh, almost looks like a toaster oven, um, you know, basically a little mini oven. And uh, it's supposed to work really well. Uh, I don't. I do not have one. Uh, I know people that do and, and swear by them. Um, definitely worth checking out if you're looking for like that luxury kind of item for somebody that 
has everything and you want to drop a grand on it and or I think about a hundred or a thousand bucks. Um, could be wrong though. And, uh, or maybe just under, and, uh, you know, you have this great opportunity to kind of do that. Um, Matt Hagman, who was down at, uh, he's down in Miami and he was used to be with the, uh, Knight foundation is now joined. Uh, he ran for office and now he's back and he's doing, uh, he's an executive vice president at, uh, beacon council. So he just got a new gig there. Congrats to Matt. Um, Kira Newman, who was part of our tech co team for such a long time, she helped uh, with so many things and actually also helped me write uh, Start a Mixology, the book that came out in 2014, has a, a book that she just uh, worked on for a while with um, a number of great people. So it's called The Gratitude Project, and it's all about gratitude. And uh, Robert Emmons uh, from the University of California, Davis, as well as Greater Good Science Center at Berkeley, um, California, uh, came together to create this book. And it's, it's out there if you want to go check it out. It's all about gratitude. And it's a lot of different research. And um there's science behind it. So I think you should check it out if you're interested in that. Uh, Courtney and T, uh, Ty uh, Caldwell from Shearshare. We love them. They're a portfolio company with established ventures. They were our 2016 start of the year. They just raised, whoop, whoop, yeah, $2.3 million more in funding. And uh, obviously excited to see them continue their success. They are a couple entrepreneur. They are black founders. They are crushing it. And I'd love to, you know, be able to continue to support their journey. So um Go check out Shearshare if you haven't as well, um, what they're up to. All right. Uh, one of our new new but old kind of reconnected friends, uh, he was a, also an a alumni of our old uh, Start of the Year program back in the day in Baltimore. And now he's, he's spun out um, and he's got a new fund he just launched called Rare Breed VC. Um, Mac Conwell, is, is, uh, he's, uh, he's out there and he's, he's making a huge name for himself right now. And I uh, love following his journey because you know he reached out to me right as he was getting started with this and we connected and he's... He's got this new fund and he's investing in startups everywhere. So check that out. Uh, Susan McPherson, who uh, I've known for a while now, has a new book. Uh, it's coming out next year, The Lost Art of Connecting, which, gosh, 2020 couldn't be a better year for that, right? Um, as we're all kind of hunkered down in our homes, um, I think that art is going to be tough, tougher. Or maybe it won't be. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I, I was actually thinking about this the other day as we're preparing for our summit because we have the ability to the capability of requesting uh, meetings with people, other attendees or uh, speakers or mentors, that sort of thing. So, somewhat limited there. But um, I actually the virtual meeting or connections to me personally, just given my personality. Right. I, I if I'm at a conference, I may not I may be a little reluctant to go up to somebody and just introduce myself. But. Yeah. Some of these virtual connections are almost forced connections where you can get somebody one on one. I don't know. I think there's value there, right? I'm not, I, I'm yeah. trying to try to get my way through that. Right. I think that people are more con like, will have, are more brave, you know, online to be able to like, hey, connect or whatever. And then on top of it, like people can hide behind it too, right? And so there's a little bit of, um, you're not, it's not that weird awkwardness that you would have if you're in person, you wanted to go up to somebody like, oh, I'm going to shake their hand or I'm going to introduce myself or whatever. So maybe, yeah, maybe it is more easier, is easier online to connect. Um, we'll we'll yeah, see. Just personally, I, I mean, I've been setting up meetings and, and receiving yeah. some meeting uh, requests. And then yeah. I've had a lot of people recently reaching out on, on LinkedIn, like people I haven't talked to in a while saying, hey, let's jump on a Zoom and just, you know, uh, reconnect and chat. So I, I really like that aspect. And I think probably if I'm, I mean, if I'm being honest, I think that it's I'm probably scheduling more meetings than I was when, when I was out and about in the, in the, in the world. So. Right. Definitely. They're just not as interesting because we're sitting in front of a screen. <laughs> You're not going to a coffee shop and meeting somebody or going to a bar and meeting somebody or going to a concert and meeting somebody or whatever. It's, it's like, this is what we're doing. <laughs> so it's a little um, bit more of a watered down experience, but there's yeah. a little bit more. So anyway, water down. What's, in, what's in your cup? This is a segment called what's in your cup today. What's in your cup this morning? Oh, I have some McDonald's blend. Uh, oh. curry. Keurig coffee. It's not that bad, actually. Ugh. McDonald's blend, though? What is, is that? Is that like a Keurig like flavor? Well, yeah. I mean, McDonald's sells their Keurig cups. And oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't know that. I know that people swear by their coffee and just like they love Dunkin' Donuts. So sorry if I put my put my my finger up. I'm, I'm a little bit of a coffee snob, as you know. I know. But it's let me just tell you this. I had your same reservations and it's not it's it's probably yeah. It's better than your average Keurig coffee. Yeah. Put it that I am. I'm drinking some Bulletproof this morning, decaf, but it's mixed with a little bit of uh, four schismatic mushroom, uh, mushroom gro uh, coffee uh, supplement in there. So it's got a little bit of a little bit of uh, mushroom immunity and focus and calm today. 
I'm, I'm, I'm well aware you, you, your mushroom, but <laughs> your brewed mushroom water. So, yep. Uh, okay. One more, one more, one more shout out today. Ron Klain from Re- revolution. Um, he's a, which is a fund of a, a venture fund out in DC, uh, that, you know, Steve case and Ted Leones is are part of, and Ron was a co-founder of, and I've been on the rise of the rest tour with them for a while now as they go around the country looking for startups. Anyway, he's, uh, He's been named the president-elect Joe Biden's chief of staff. So congratulations to him. That's a huge role and um, definitely up for the task. He's a, a lawyer by trade and he's worked uh, on, you know, like the Ebola, Ebola crisis and others uh, closely with, with Joe Biden. So I'm excited to see that uh, he's joining forces with him and obviously reconnected and hopefully help, uh, help us get through this pandemic. Sounds good. All right. So, one thing I wanted to mention, and it's coming up quick, so um, hopefully you hear this right away and you know, aren't hearing it like the day after and saying, oh, I missed it. But anyway, watching this weekend, I know you're a big fan of like space and whatnot. Um, we got the first NASA launch uh, of astronauts from U.S. soil since I believe 2011. And uh, they're headed up to the Inter- International Space Station. And it's a launch in partnership with SpaceX. So uh, Elon Musk's company, uh, he's got, as you mentioned, COVID, hopefully he's still able to attend, or maybe hopefully this doesn't turn into a super spreader event uh, as they launch this out of Florida on Saturday, November 14th at 7.49 p.m. Eastern on the dot. Hopefully that, that's the current time, hopefully it doesn't change, but it's out of Cape Canaveral. Yeah, I'll be watching. That's Definitely. Really cool. yeah, I, I wish it was daytime. I, I don't know, is nighttime a better time to watch? I don't, I don't know. It feels like you won't be able to see anything. I, I don't know. That's yeah. a good question. Wait. Yeah, I'm, I'm filled with questions, John. You know that. Give Elon a uh, tweet and ask him. Yeah, can you ask him and how and tell him get get well too soon? Because obviously that's terrible. He has COVID. Actually, my <laughs> uncle is part of the NASA. Um, you know their uh, their rocket program, so I could probably oh, cool. shoot. Ask him. I, I'm going to ask him. I'll get. Yeah, back what's him. better? Well, I think I'm assuming they're doing it because of the way the current like stars are aligned or the way the Earth is aligned with. How we're orbiting, or something like that. Um, as you can see, the extent of my knowledge of <laughs> launching rockets. Uh, I'm no rocket scientist. I am a computer whiz, but not not a rocket scientist. Anyway, uh, next next uh, yeah. So that that's kind of going on. I'm gonna definitely watch that, and obviously that leads into next week, which um, you know is a big week for us. We've been working around the clock. People are wondering what I'm doing. I've been hunkering down, but basically, you and I and our entire team of ten at Established has been. We're going to tail off for the start of the year summit, which is our eighth annual summit. Talked about it before, but it is starting uh, on Monday, November 16th at 11 a.m. And sign up now. It's a comp- you know, we're giving away complimentary tickets. Uh, if you just go to uh, est.us forward slash summit 2020, and you can get tickets for the event and register right there online and be ready to go. But the reason you should go is a couple of different things. Two things. We've got 100 companies that we vetted down from 1,000 companies. They're all going to be pitching throughout the three days in a shark, shark tank kind of style of competition. Um, what's on the line is $20,000 in investment from us at Established Ventures, as well as a bunch of prizes and, and potential, you know, the glory of having being the startup of the year and getting a big trophy and all that, uh, the accolades that go with that. Um, so that's, that's one component. And if you're not a startup person, you don't care about startups, you're not a business into the business thing or whatever entrepreneurship, uh, we do have speakers as well. We've got a great set of speakers, which include, uh, people like Kara Golden from Hint Water. She started Hint Water and now she's got a new best-selling book called, uh, Undaunted. We've got Mike Evans. If you ever grub, use Grubhub, he's the co-founder. He's the reason why. And so he's the founder of that. He's going to be talking about that. His new, his new, um, book coming out hangry and, um, his new, um, startup fixer.com. Uh, we've got uh, Low Tony, who's a venture capitalist. We've got Tim Draper, who's a you know third generation venture capitalist. We've got uh, Meredith Feynman, who's an author all about uh, you know teaching you how to tell your story better. And she's got a book called Brag Better. We've got Rohit Bargava, who's got multiple books. His latest is The Non Obvious Mega Trends, which kind of kind of sh- shines a light on all these things that are non obvious that have kind of led to where we're at and where things are going. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, Mark Nogger, who's a venture capitalist. We've got. Sarah Evans is going to share interesting uh, insights about marketing and, and digital PR. Whitney Johnson, who's a, an author as well with multiple books, bestsellers. Um, she's got a new book called Disrupt Yourself, which is all about how to do that. And uh, obviously in this year when things have been a little weird, we've all been disrupted. It's kind of a good message. So, uh, and maybe potentially um, you'll learn something. So all that stuff, but hopefully you're inspired by it. Maybe you'll go sign up. We'd love to see you there. We're going to be there hanging out and obviously doing a lot of these interviews. Um, 
and it's just gonna be a great event. So I'm excited and hope everyone comes to it because it is live and I want you to not miss it. It's November 16th through 18th. You can register, as I mentioned, est.us forward slash summit 2020. Right. It's, and it's a free event. Like you said, it's, it's very exciting. I'm not going to, you know, give any spoilers, but we also have some fun, quirky things, maybe some some things up our sleeve, right? It's going to be fun. It's going to, yeah, it's going to be fun. And I don't think you even mentioned not even half of the speakers and people that are going to be involved in ask me anything sessions. We have some great alumni coming back for some panels and a, a lot of tips tricks for companies out there and people that are just, you know, high performing individuals in, in life. So there's a lot to learn. Uh, I'm very excited about it. And we're going to have a lot of fun. Definitely. Definitely. And we got a few more tricks I'm trying to pull off between before now and then we'll see if it comes through um, before the event. Uh, got all my feelers out for some fun as we try to make it the most interesting and memorable experience we can. Oh yeah, of course. Um, so I don't think we have a whole lot of time left, so let's keep rolling. Um, yeah. Anything that you've been watching or reading lately that you want to, tell our, our viewers about or, and a listener? Um, yeah, I mean, I've been reading a lot. I've been kind of, you know, as, as I, what I do is I put out this newsletter that you can go subscribe to at uh, frankgruber.me forward slash newsletter. And I put out, it started just a few summers ago as just like, I'm going to share some cool, interesting articles and kind of what I'm thinking because social media is not what it used to be. And now it's become a thing and a podcast and everything. So it's kind of fun how this has evolved. But uh, what I've been reading is uh, there's this interesting article out there about uh, this new trend. So trend spotting uh, Zoom towns, which are basically the idea here is that you can live everywhere anywhere. And uh, there's a, an article I share called Zoom towns are exploding in the West. I don't think it's just the West. I think it's anywhere that there's real estate, like that there's more spread out real estate um, in those more rural areas, because ultimately you don't need to be in a city if you have an, a fast internet connection. But what this is doing is it's actually taxing those little cities that are not set up for it, right? The bigger cities are set up with the infrastructure. The little ones aren't. So if you think about it, like, you know, everyone needs the fast broadband and all that. And, um, you know, a lot more people going to these places that maybe, you know, in, in rural Utah or like, you know, here up in Maine or like over in, uh, you know, just other areas that weren't less like super populated, but are cute little towns or, you know, especially ski towns, resort towns, things like that. Sure. Yeah, the infrastructure it probably isn't there to support some of that, but it's also good if you can work remotely and, and get out there and do some of that. So I have a colleague and a friend of mine that literally sold his house and every all, mostly everything he has and has a uh, we're through stuff in storage, and he's taking a year uh, um, in a uh, airstream and just bouncing wow. around. And, you know, he's a CTO and he, he's not missing a, a beat. I was, able that to- sounds awesome. I would love that. I want to get one of those RVs that are like the, uh, you know, the Sprinter ones, like either the Winnebago version or like the, uh, I guess there's a couple of different, different versions. I think Airstream makes one as well. Um, that would be amazing. I'd love to have one of those and just be able to jet around to different parts of the country because I've been a little grounded lately. Yeah, I've, so I've done a little bit of this, uh, this year traveling in a, in an RV and, and working remotely. Yep. And the one thing I will say is it sounds great, but once you get, once you get there and you're online and you're, and you're working, yeah. you know, it is, it is still work, right? Mm-hmm. So I mean, you can go to the dinner, um, and now in the time of COVID, it's not even like you can go to dinner in a nice spot or something, right? I mean, you can go and pick up your meal and eat it in your RV. <laughs> so, right. And I uh, guess I should mention with that, the reason you're saying that you shouldn't do that is there's a new study. I don't know why it just came out. I think it was on Eater and a bunch of other places that came out that was kind of repeating a study that was put out there, but more or less, um, it's not safe to eat inside restaurants right now. <laughs> so newsflash, I think, you know, we've kind of something we should have assumed, you know, but so outdoor dining is the way to go if you're going to do it. And anyway, keep going. No, that's it. I, I just, I mean, it's a lot of fun, but it's also, it's still work and you, you, there are some weird parameters given the COVID stuff that's going on. But anyways, totally. yeah. it. so it's not a hundred percent what you expected um, from the experience is what you're saying of these new places, because you can't really do everything you wanted to do before. Right. Okay. So moving on, we've got um, you a big fan of MTV back in the day. Oh yeah. Frank. You know, I, I don't know. I always associate MTV with our crazy college experiences with their spring break. MTV spring break back in the day when we were kind of on it and all that kind of stuff. But that's a whole nother long story, but um, we had a great time on MTV. Turns out Apple, what's that? You don't want me to go into that and tell us some stories? <laughs> we need a whole nother podcast for that, but um, we did. Okay. So quickly we did pretend there could be footage of us dancing in speedos in front of Carmen Electra for a date with her. That is potentially possible. I'm not just putting it out there uh, or potentially hanging out with, Paris Hilton and 
Polly Shore and Eminem and all these other people. So yes, we've got some fun stories of MTV and it brings back great memories, but um, kind of went away for a while, right? Or it's not as prominent. Every time I turn it on, it's a re- it's a reality show or ridiculousness, but I don't see a lot of music on there anymore. It's not as much music. It used to be just music. And then they started getting into like the more television reality TV thing. And so anyway, launching soon or launching now, I guess you could say, is Apple. Apple launches the Apple uh, Music TV, a 24-hour music video stream, live stream, which is new. So maybe Apple is trying to recreate that magic. I would say it's pretty cool. I've been checking it out. Okay, yeah. And then speaking on the same thing with Apple, they've been kind of on a roll. Apple TV Plus kind of did roll out some amazing stuff this year. I don't know if you were familiar watching any of the programs that they put out this year, um, but uh, they've been dripping kind of slowly. Like, so we know I'm a huge fan, you are as well, of Ted Lasso. Amazing right. program, right? Like, awesome, feel good show. Like, you should go check it out. Um, they've got other shows. They've got the Sesame Street Workshop. They've got. Um, Dickinson, which was uh, on there and was pretty amazing. Mythic Quest, remember that one about oh, the, Mythic Quest the... is awesome. Yeah, so it's kind of like these yeah. these kind of quick hits that they they you kind of binge watch all of them and then you're done and then you kind of forget. Like I can't even remember what else we watched. Right. Um, right. right now, right now I'm watching Tyran, um, uh, which they they I think acquired from like a it was an Israeli program and, and it has subtitles. It's it's hard to watch and work at the same time, but. So anywho, lots of great content and they kind of silently, I feel like won the whole thing like this year, right? Like they, they've been kind of putting out these great programs that people are talking about. And um, I haven't watched the new one with um, Bill Murray and uh, Rashida Jones on the rocks, but that's out right now. And, you know, they kind of continue to kind of push things out um, as we go here and, and just kind of drip it out. And it's not that expensive either, right? Like I think it's like five bucks or something like that. So um, definitely worth it. Right. I think I got, somehow I got an incentive where I got a, a year of it for free because I'm a Apple music subscriber, which was great. Oh, right. so yeah. They're bundling it together. That's smart. All right. All right. So I know we're, we're kind of cutting it close on time here. So let's just kind of wrap here in a minute, but a um, couple of, couple of quick hits here. So uh, cryptocurrency, which has been kind of that fringe thing for a while and kind of had a big kind of hallowing out and then back up again. And it's going crazy right now. Um, PayPal just recently opened up a network, their network to cryptocurrency, which is a big kind of like, like validation, I'd say, if PayPal is starting to do it as well. Um, what do you think? I think so too. I think it's going to be a game changer. The yeah. biggest, the biggest gray area for me, and like, I'm, I'm not the, the, the dumbest parent in the woods. I'm not the smartest either. Right. But I, I, you know, being able to purchase it and, and use it, was really the biggest issue I think people were having with it. And now that completely, it opens it, it opens it all up. So I think it's a, right. a game changer. Right, right, right. We talked about great gaming briefly a minute ago, but uh, Facebook is jumping into the game with their first um, world, you know, basically first uh, cloud gaming uh, platform and their first few steps into that. They, so they're more than just uh, your average Farmville or whatever we used to play on that like 10 years ago. And uh, they're just kind of, they're up in their game there. Well, I guess what I'm saying is that they're going to try to start competing with your PS5 you're talking about or whatever. Uh, let them try. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to take a while. All right. So a couple, couple more because we've been talking about the – we like to talk about, uh, you know, space and whatnot. There's a couple of, of things here. So solar is the cheapest electricity in history, according to a recent report. So go go sun power, all you sun worshippers, worshippers out there. And uh, the moon, the moon, it has water. That's wild. Yeah. How did this fly under the radar? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's what blows my mind is how did we just figure this out? Right. I mean, it, it, NASA it, confirmed it, it like last week or the week before yeah. hidden water on the sunlit surface. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, in, the, in the universe and in the galaxy that we don't know about. Yeah. The moon, you know, it's closest to us. We still have no idea what's going on up there, but yeah, definitely. It's interesting. I mean, yeah, so that's a big, big, big uh, kind of thing that came out this year. And 2020 just never, never does surprise us, right? <laughs> Continues to surprise us, I guess you could say. Uh, so, um, you know, I used to live in Vegas and it turns out the road trip to Vegas is back. Um, you know, people used to, you know, drive from like L.A. to, to Vegas a lot. And uh, I guess that is getting, uh, you know, getting to be a, the thing again, especially with this pandemic and traffic is on the rise. So everyone be safe out there, buckle up, 
you know, be kind to one another as on your, on your road, share the road, share the road, would you, John? Happily. Happily. All right. So, uh, and then finally, um, you know, this whole, I'm not even getting to this, this, this one, but too deep, but we did have an election. It's, uh, you know, it was an interesting kind of last couple of weeks and uh, we have a president elect and basically though, the whole, you know, the, the current president elect won the popular vote by, you know, a lot and they're still, still counting in a lot of places. Um, but either way he was made, you know, winner with, electoral, uh, with the electoral college as well. But both, both candidates had more votes popular wise than any every year. So, or, you know, this is the most turnout we've ever had for an election, which is phenomenal. And um, but obviously you have to pick a winner and we've got the president elect Joe, elect Joe Biden. And but it does beg the question, this whole electoral college system um, that they've been using for a while. And um, I feel like it needs a reboot. Um, I don't know about you. I think the whole election system needs to be uh, just 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 like anything else. You need to iterate. You need to move forward. You need to clean some stuff up, learn from mistakes. And um, like I said, I. Uh, you know, being apolitical here, it just needs revised, just like any other product or process in the world. So definitely, I just feel like um, it's interesting how, you know, that we give and, and no offense. I love these rural places. I'm living in a rural place. We give a lot of weight to places that just have a lot of land. Sure. And there's not people there, but they get enough weight. Like it's kind of crazy. I think it needs to be kind of re um, re reallocated in some ways. Um, certain States have, um, you know, a 10th of the amount of people and get the, you know, for their, for their uh, amount of land, get that same amount as like a California, which has, you know, 10 times as people. And granted, California has a great number of electoral votes, but they don't have the same amount. It doesn't kind of pair up with like certain states that have like way more. So an interesting trend that I'm seeing is uh, states like Maine and Nebraska have started this situation where they've got congressional districts where they're actually doing voting by region of your state, which allows you to not just take all of the electoral college votes, but splits them up, which I think is really smart because there's going to be kind of rural areas that get to get their voice heard and not have to fall in line with what's happening in the bigger cities of those bigger states. It makes sense to me. Yeah, I saw that um, Maine and then what was the other state? That Nebraska. Was that as well? Nebraska. Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah. It makes more sense to me. I, I don't feel like I know enough about it to make a real firm opinion on it, but it, it does need to be looked at. I would, I would definitely. Yeah, that. I just think it's cool because then you get to every state has their own voice, including every area where right now it, you have to almost like fall in line with what your state thinks, right? Which is not necessarily what you think, right? If you're living in a rural area or if you're living in a popular area and there's more rural area than popular area, maybe the rural area wins your state, but you really feel like the popular area gets then like lost, step up, lost behind or left behind and, and vice versa. So I, anyway, I think it's an interesting model. I think there's people should look at it. And there's an article I shared about electoral college in general. It doesn't necessarily go into that component as much, but it just talks about how maybe this is a little bit outdated. And it was tied a lot back in the day. Electoral college was, um, was developed and kind of tied to, um, you know, when back in the day when we had um, people that owned slaves, actually. So I think it's time to kind of think about maybe rethinking about how we do this. I'll leave it at that. All right. So lots to lot. We've talked about a lot. We've been really rocking today. I hope you have everyone has a great weekend and, and into next week. And I hope to see everyone at the start of the year summit. Uh, it's going to be a good one. Um, and I hope I don't want you to miss it and be like, oh, man, I wish I would have heard about it. So just tell your friends, tell, tell your family, bring your pets. Um, Johnny, you have anything else that you want to share today? Nope. I just hope everybody has a nice weekend and stays healthy and safe out there. And hopefully we'll see everybody at the summit. Yes. And this has been another episode of the Somewhat Frank podcast. We love you for listening to us. Thank you so much. And uh, share this with a friend, subscribe, leave us a review. We want to hear what, what you're thinking. And, and uh, we'd love to incorporate it in the next show. So thanks everyone for listening. Have a great day. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks so much for listening. This is Somewhat Frank signing off. Frank Gruber. Oh, and don't forget, subscribe online, iTunes, SoundCloud, Android, wherever you can find it. Somewhat Frank podcast. We'll be back soon with another episode. Thanks so much.